when I introduced Radha Gopinath yesterday, I forgot two very important things. Radha Gopinath Prabhu also is in charge, is the principal of a school of Gurukul children. There are about uh, 60, 50, 60 children. How many children Prabhu now? 27. Uh, 27 children. Uh, now actually, you know how much to accept his statements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, he has been taking care of children and raising them and through the Gurukul, Many, many people have become devotees. You see, our Rupa Goswami Prabhu is from Gurukul also, from Bombay, who is living in Pune. So, Prabhuji is the main uh, person behind the Gurukul there in Bombay. And he is also the temple president of Chaupati Temple. Chaupati Temple has a, a rotating president system. They have four presidents, and he is one among the presidents. Every three months, they manage the temple. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari <coughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashoda Nanda Navraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nanda Navraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nanda Navraja Janaranjana Yashoda Nandana Braja Janaranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna 
यमुना तीर पनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज विहारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 ज्ञानतिरांधस्य ज्ञानाजनशलाकया चक्षुरुन्मील तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतमनोष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वपदाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरोन्वैष्णवाश्चीप साग्र जा सह गण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेवराधाकृष्णपाद सह गणलिता श्री विशाखान्विता हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देव प्रणमा हरि प्रिय 
वाछाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधु पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभो निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाध शिवासदी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे उत्साहात निश्चया धैर्या तत्तत कर्म प्रवर्तना संगत्यागात सतो वृत्ते हे षडभिर भक्ति ही प्रसिद्ध थी देर आर सिक्स प्रिंसिपल्स फेवरेबल टू द एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ प्योर डिवोशनल सर्विस बीइंग एंथुजियास्टिक एंडेवरिंग विद कॉन्फिडेंस बीइंग पेशेंट acting according to regulative principles such as shravanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam hearing chanting and remembering krishna abandoning the association of non devotees and following in the footsteps of the previous acharyas these six principles undoubtedly assure the complete success of pure devotional service so yesterday we discussed about <coughs> the beginning process of taking up devotional service and that is having received the mercy of guru and krishna how with a repentant heart for the past we take a vow to not engage in the same activity but rather to take up that mercy by following a hygienic process where we can remain pure and uncontaminated and progress gradually to our stage of perfect health or perfect position constitutional position of being a servant of krishna but then one has to gradually keep on progressing there is no question of stability uh, static devotional service is dynamic so either you are going up or you are going down there is no question of staying actually even to stay at one place you have to keep on struggling <clears throat> so how to make sure that we are constantly advancing in devotional service so six principles actually bhakti means to surrender to the lord and sharanagati implies two things anukulyasya sankalpo pratikulyasya varjanam whatever is favorable we try to adopt however difficult it may be and whatever is unfavorable however pleasing it may be to the mind the senses and the ego we actually try to give it up so in this third verse rupa goswami is describing six favorable items conducive to advancement in pure devotional service so he begins the first word is utsah <clears throat> utsah means enthusiasm <clears throat> prabhupad very brilliantly and very concisely 
defines what is enthusiasm actually the test of a man of knowledge is <clears throat> how concise how precise and crisp with few words and de he defines a term Elo eloquence true eloquence means essential truth spoken concisely so how beautifully he says what is enthusiasm he says endeavor executed with intelligence in krishna consciousness <clears throat> you think about it it's so perfectly the words are chosen nothing more nothing less perfect tailor made like a good tailor makes a suit you know no extra piece hanging and no tight somewhere and you know wrinkle somewhere no perfect similarly this definition is so perfect everything is fit in all that you need to know endeavor executed with intelligence in krishna consciousness that is utsaha or enthusiasm now <clears throat> just this word endeavor speaks a lot some people define bhakti simply as devotion that doesn't imply activity but prabhupad translates devo bhakti as devotional service it is it is rendering of service actually recently i went to kolapur and one brahmana nice sophisticated brahmana from south uh, north of karnataka very pious doing lot of rituals worship etc he asked me this question he was he chants all the mantras while offering he was telling no we prepare so many items and then we start offering the uh, um, aarti etc we chant so many mantras and then we glorify we glorify the lord through so many prayers of all this which is the most important <coughs> the preparation the offering idam naivedyam idam argyam idam aachamaniyam and then we actually glorify them There's so many aspects so in glorification and praising of the lord which aspect is most important i'm not able to understand i was actually thinking for some time about this i mean i was asking straight from heart i mean he wanted to know and i was thinking about it and then i told him actually every every aspect is equally important because it's all an exhibition of our love and devotion to that personality details are a manifestation of the principle of love rituals become a burden if there is no love suppose somebody comes to your home and you love that person and you want to offer him some nice salad because you don't know anything else cooking or anything so you know you you cut so you have two choices you bring a carrot you bring a cucumber and you bring a few things and put it in a plate and ask him eat it now this is the peeler this is the knife eat it hari krishna but then an exhibition of love is you cut it not just cut it if you have seen people arrange it so nicely after arranging in a circular way cutting in various and you know various designs then put some green um, leaves over that and some coconut powder and this and it's so many beautiful you know you don't even feel like touching it it will spoil the 
not in a bad sense but in a sense of you know like so nice i don't want to spoil the alignment by taking away one carat piece <laughs> so beautifully arranged now ultimately that person can say sab to andar khana hai na kaat ke kha lo bas but it's an exhibition of love so actually <clears throat> all these details is simply an exhibition of love and if there is no love kitna bar ghumana agarbatti ek bar ghumana se ho gaya na 10 10 bar kyun idhar teen udhar do udhar char <laughs> why do all that it becomes a burden and therefore it gives good excuse for atheistic people to criticize rituals without love <clears throat> so actually the first thing is endeavor endeavor means it is not simply uh, imaginative prabhupad begins the purport in a, such a nice way to this whole uh, um, purport i mean to this text he says devotional service is not a matter of sentimental speculation or imaginative ecstasy its substance is practical activity practical activity devotional service love love is manifested in service sacrifice when you love someone you sacrifice and sacrifice what whatever is time the ability the facility at your disposal you sacrifice make an offering so it is endeavor endeavor means practical activity it is cultivation just like when you say cultivation requires activity you want to cultivate a land it requires so much of endeavor so much of activity it's not that i just sit and my bhakti is over bhakti means practical activity if you see in the spiritual world everyone is busy serving so it is endeavor <clears throat> not idle meditation on the void what will you meditate on actually if there is nothing but it is actual activity so practical activity so that is the first part endeavor can you imagine just this one word implies so many concepts it's practical activity it is cultivation it's not idle meditation devotional service so endeavor but endeavor executed with intelligence sometimes people misunderstand enthusiasm simply to mean bubbling around from one place to the other one moment he is here next moment in the other room next moment in other country next moment here just just running around everywhere <clears throat> not necessarily that it means simply just running 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 around there is a story of the tortoise and the hare all of you know right both began running and the first was hare was so enthusiastic he was running and then he said anyway that fellow is long back he slept but the on the part of the tortoise it was so steady even st steadiness in devotional service requires enthusiasm without without enthusiasm you can't be steady also so if someone is steadily going on in krishna consciousness you must know that fellow has enthusiasm you can't maintain steadiness in any activity without enthusiasm so endeavor executed with intelligence intelligence means you take a stock of what are my abilities what are the facilities i have what how much time i have how much what is the goal how much time how much time i have at my disposal and very scrutinizingly plan intelligently so that i can go on under any circumstances <clears throat> one time zolinas giriraj swami maharaj in bombay when prabhupada asked him to make arrange for a big pandal program he had practically no help at that time every running around he was doing 
He was running around for the pandal, he was running around for this, arrangements, for prasad, for um, everything, literally. And when, when everything was arranged, when Prabhupada came, he was nowhere around, he was just taking rest. He was exhausted. So Prabhupada, it seems, met him later and said, where were you? And he said, no, I was exhausted, I was just taking, why? So, no, I had to do this. No, no, you had so many people. Uh, no, 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 I don't know I, whether they'll be able to do it or that, I couldn't, so therefore I did it myself. At that time, Prabhupada <coughs> told him a very nice thing. He said, there are four kinds of people. <coughs> he said, <coughs> a active fool, and a lazy fool and an active intelligent and lazy intelligent. The worst is an active fool. If a person is very active and a fool, it's like monkeys, they're very active. And most of the time they're very foolish from our point of view at least. They can create more havoc, more damage. But then there is a lazy fool. He's a fool, but thank God he's lazy. So always he's sleeping. So at least he harms himself, but not others. <clears throat> but then there is an active intelligent. That is what he was indirectly referring to Giriraj Maharaj's activities at that time. He said, you are, in, you, are, you, you are intelligent, you are active. You are moving around, moving around, and therefore you got exhausted. And therefore he said, you should become lazy intelligent. Now what does lazy intelligent? Doesn't mean just sleeping around. Intelligent fellow sleeping around is lazy intelligent. No. <laughs> lazy means no unnecessary endeavor without proper planning. Just running around suddenly and not. There's a, a plan. You should plan it. Properly choose people inspire them, empower them, and with least amount of energy, get the maximum thing done. That is intelligence. Utility is the principle. We have, we have so much to do. The whole world has to become Krishna conscious. And how many of devotees are there? Very few. Therefore, their energy, their time, their intelligence, the everything is very, very important. It cannot be just dissipated into nothingness and wasted. Every pie, every moment, every ounce of energy, is it must be properly utilized. Just like if you are on a track, if you are on a um, trekking, and you are given one bottle of water to last for four days, you have to manage. How you use that? Because you know, this is my only, this is the only thing at my disposal and I have four days to go. So not even a drop falls here and there. You take just whatever is necessary, not too much, and then simply urinate it. <laughs> no, every moment you, you plan every drop, nothing should be wasted. So endeavor executed with intelligence. Intelligence means you, you properly know, take a stock of what are your weaknesses, uh, sorry, what are your strengths and don't say weaknesses, what are your challenges. Understand them, what is the goal to be achieved, how much time do I have at my disposal, what are the facilities I have and then use accordingly, intelligently. So that is endeavor executed with intelligence in Krishna consciousness because even materialistic people are endeavoring with intelligence. They are very, they know how to extract the full out of whatever they have. They are intelligent. And they are also <coughs> Endeavoring much more than pro probably than any devotee. It's a fact. 
because their faith in in that illusion illusory goal is more stronger than our faith in krishna they have 100% faith little more endeavor and this carrot that is dangling i will reach it that's that's all two more years i'll struggle struggle get lot of money retire and become happy this carrot i'll get immediately just two more steps and i'll get the carrot their faith in that dangling carrot is much more than our faith in krishna and therefore they are so enthusiastic so energetic we, we lack that it's a fact one day i went to you know for janmashtami i was supposed to ask make a souvenir and that souvenir had to come on that particular day for the evening program so i had to get it done i went early in the morning on the day of janmashtami to sit in front of that printer and that fellow was busy i was sitting right in front of him and the whole day i was sitting with him for me there was nothing no worry because i knew i had to fast and you know not eat anything but that fellow was sitting with me early morning to practically 10:30 at night till i grabbed it and ran and during around 10 o'clock or something at night he was sitting right in front of me his paper one of his paper just fell from the table and <clears throat> there was a dabba cap it went underneath that dabba so just to take off take that paper he lifted that dabba and he looked at a little puzzling look on his face and he say it is little heavy then he then he remembered he said oh aaj main khana khana hi bhul gaya his wife had sent around 11 o'clock in the morning this fellow was sitting he forgot to he didn't drink anything he didn't uh, eat even drink a water what to speak of coffee or tea he didn't eat anything whole day was sitting right in front of me was getting it done because he knew that if i do this job i will get more orders from these fellows and these are you know is convinced lot money is there they will come yeah, some of people have this idea lot of money aata hai wahan se bahar se aata hai aap logo ko so that enthusiasm that determination that faith that eventually i will get lot of money was so enthusiastic that he forgot about all these things and i was thinking i wish i could take a dust from his feet and <laughs> put it on my head and if i i had so much enthusiasm in in my service i would have achieved the perfection of life very soon but we lack we will discuss that later why we lack that many a times or sometimes why we become lax but the fact is um uh, um that faith so they are they have full faith but unfortunately that is illusory their happiness will never come just like the donkey will never get the carrot but we we have full faith that we is the right process so endeavor executed with intelligence through intelligence we have to understand what really to be strived for and utilize that and in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness and what does krishna consciousness mean they also are endeavoring with intelligence a devotee also endeavors with intelligence but the difference is one does it in krishna consciousness and krishna consciousness implies number 1 his motivation is pure a lusty person an angry person a greedy person endeavors with all intelligence and creates a havoc in society you have to have determination to destroy a building in america in midst of all kinds of things so much of planning is required so much of enthusiasm is required endeavor is required to actually go ahead taking all risks even giving up their own life but at what cost for what benefit for whose benefit so endeavor executed is important but with intelligence in krishna consciousness that means pure in motivation no other motivation other than pleasing guru and krishna 
यस्य प्रसादाद भगवत प्रसादो व्यवसाय आत्मिका बुद्धिर एके हा कुरुनंदन विष्णुनाथ चक्रधर ठाकुर राइट्स दैट्स द मीनिंग एके हा मींस दिस फोकस्ड ऑन प्लीजिंग गुरु एंड कृष्णा एंड देयरफॉर सच अ पर्सन हैज एब्सोल्युटली नो अदर मोटिवेशन हिज मोटिवेशन इज 100% प्योर एंड एंड सेकंडली दिस एनर्जी executed with intelligence is guided under an authority it is guided under an authority and because of that guidance it uh, uh, it is fruitful always under guidance because there is chance that we may waste that energy or the directly uh, this energy may many a times be misdirected therefore we always need guidance and that guidance is that the krishna consciousness means under proper guidance pure motivation under proper guidance and utilizing everything there is full scope for utilizing any and everything in krishna's service for a materialistic person they may not have use for some things but a devotee has use for everything give him anything and he will use it in krishna service because he understands everything is energy of krishna and therefore he will use everything that is intelligence he knows how to use everything in krishna service and it is all done for the satisfaction and pleasure of krishna that that's what it means in krishna consciousness pure motivation under proper guidance utilizing any and everything in krishna's service for the pleasure and satisfaction of krishna arthe akhila chesta so that is uh and that's enthusiasm <coughs> now <coughs> actually why enthusiasm is required because if it it's like a immune system a spiritual immunity system if you don't have immunity then you can easily get diseased and a person overcome by the diseases of lust envy anger etc can get deviated and can become lax and our uh, uh, speed in krishna consciousness or the enthusiasm may slowly get uh, diluted and gradually we become we can uh, become inactive <coughs> actually what is enthusiasm devotional service without enthusiasm is meaningless there is we are the tatastha shakti tatastha shakti means matter and spirit both are there this body is gross matter it is activated by the soul as long as the soul is there the body is active as long as the soul is gone it is dead matter just imagine some fat person here who is the fattest here who is well, well built sorry i won't say fat yes ram priya prabhu is very well built person <laughs> now yesterday night he was the most active dancing right what is your weight prabhu ha huh? 100 my god century <laughs> should say three times hari bol hari bol hari bol actually what does it require to lift 100 kilo weight how much strength is required to lift a 100 kilo weight 
but you see this body of 100 kilo jumping on on automatically just because one ten thousand the tip of the hair is activating it <laughs> can you imagine the power of the soul one ten thousand the tip of the hair it's like an ant lifting ram priya prabhu <laughs> and making a pole vault in the olympics ants olympics can you imagine an ant lifting a, such a person and not only lifting and somehow crawling but just whoosh, pole vaulting like this that's what the soul is not even like an ant one ten thousand the tip of the hair can you imagine how how active is the soul and if that soul leaves the same fellow if he has to be carried four people have to you know Ram Nam Satya hai. Not you, Prabhu. <laughs> May you live very long and spread devotional service far and wide. But if a man, if he has, you know, Ram Nam, hey, they keep changing shoulders every few yards. <laughs> they get exhausted. So much, so heavy, and one ten thousand the tip of the hair is activating it. Can you imagine how active is the soul? So soul by nature is dynamic and matter is gross, dead, inactive. So when the soul identifies with the body, then it is natural that you become exhausted, you become tired, you become inactive, you become dead. And to the extent a person identifies himself with the soul, he realizes I am not the body, I am the soul, to that extend that person becomes active active and enthusiastic so if we are inert if we are inactive if we are uh, apathetic indifference to the needs of the soul then naturally immediately this disease of laziness inertia creeps in inactivity creeps in so until and unless we make an effort, constant effort to be enthusiastic, if not be enthusiastic, act enthusiastic, at least to begin with. That will give life and that energy can create such, it's infectious. Laziness is infectious, enthusiasm is infectious. It depends what kind of infection you want to get. Tell me who your friends are and I'll tell you who you are. A man is known by the company he keeps. So inertia is just opposite. Apathy is opposite to uh, uh, enthusiasm. <clears throat> and see, that, that, in fact, Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes that <clears throat> the same inactivity appears even in our essential process of Krishna consciousness that is the chanting of the holy name. 99% of our advancement comes from chanting of the holy name. And in the chanting of the holy name also, one of the offenses is chanting inattentively. Inattentive means what? Inattentive means due, it is due to apathy, Sympathy. Sympathy means we actually care for someone. Apathy means audacity. Udasin. Udasin means kiya to kiya, nahi kiya to nahi kiya. Another thing is jadia. Jadia means laziness. And the third thing is vikshepa or distraction. All of this is essentially leads to inattentiveness, which leads to all the other offenses eventually. So even if you are not performing any of the ten offenses to the holy name, but if you are inattentive due to apathy, indifference or due to distraction, and rather than attending to it, if you allow it to be there and don't with enthusiasm kick them out, then it is bound to actually affect 
our uh, sadhana and naturally it will affect every aspect of our service so therefore uh, <clears throat> apathy or, or inattentiveness because of uh, apathy that is auda senior or because of laziness that is jadia and because of distraction or vikshepa now how to overcome this <clears throat> the laziness laziness means what you start off very nicely but after some time again you this is you know you see like you can see a person actually struggling and afterwards that means more and more this is like a kabaddi between maya and krishna and slowly slowly that team is winning and ultimately is won <laughs> this is a fight it's a fight it's a battle it's a battle with maya who wins it depends upon who you encourage whom you give attention to whom you give importance to they will win <clears throat> so laziness uh, laziness means allowing that inertia to overtake us so somehow or other we have to uh, make sure what is it that causes those things we have to analyze if you don't want to repeat the same mistake again analyze the event what happened which resulted in this maybe every aspect maybe i ate too much yesterday or i slept too late yesterday or i or i whatever analyze every aspect what all the things if you are not enthusiastic just analyze when you were most enthusiastic what were the factors when you were not what were the factors influencing that and make sure that gradually in your whole lifestyle you reduce those factors and increase those factors which are favorable that's intelligence executive intelligence means intelligently analyzing otherwise you are putting on a fire and pouring water it doesn't work you'll have to analytical always analyzing how to remove this what are the aspects just like materialistic people how much they are every aspect favorable they adopt even for little benefit so that's how all the uh, jadia is overcome laziness is overcome by clear chanting by little louder chanting not that you just chant you know hardly moving your lips then you don't even know even you don't know but other also don't know whether you are chanting or not because you hardly open your lips or hardly you know like speak out so if it's not then people won't even they even if somebody wants to assist you he can't assist you so <clears throat> these kind of things can overcome then audacity uh, audacity means uh, apathetic that means systematically trying to very carefully clearly conscientiously finishing at least our 16 rounds that shouldn't be theek hai baad mein kar lenge ek sath weekly quota kar lenge not like that audacity means apathy apathy means kiya to kiya nahi bhi hua to chalega kal kar lenge at least that part whatever is our commitments they have to be done very clearly nicely conscientiously and vikshepa vikshepa means distraction distraction comes because of too many attachments too many distractions that we already have right at the time of chanting it comes it doesn't come at other time only during the chanting everything comes 20 years ago what somebody did to you that also comes past life hey, that's the nature either you go backward or you go forward you never want to be in the present and present also outward while are sleeping so either either backward you go 
I don't know. I put the dhoti there. It's raining. I hope it doesn't rain. Bhiga ho gaya. Nay, other. Maybe I'll wear that. Or what if that fellow wears mine? Finished. Twenty minutes of japa are gone. <clears throat> Or future. What will I do after this? I hope I have stored prasadam in the right corner. Nobody will take it. <laughs> Whatever. Each one has his own attraction. Dis sub, you know, distractions. Whatever. But either future or in the bag, and in the process, the present is also gone. So therefore, distractions, if they really want to overcome, that comes only by developing a taste for the holy name. And taste can come only when we associate with those who have taste for the holy name, who understand its importance. so that kind of association actually removes that distraction <clears throat> actually enthusiasm is like a energy it's a powerful energy when that energy is there it burns out all anarthas it burns out all anarthas and if enthusiasm the first sign of a person becoming lax is is no more enthusiastic that means he is he is shaking hands with maya already already you know kind of having a dialogue with her what do you think how much bargaining i want to come to your side but you know what what is the proposal put up your proposal <laughs> so the first sign is that person is losing his enthusiasm so therefore actually enthusiasm is the life of devotional service devotional service or faith without enthusiasm is meaningless <coughs> and <clears throat> there are actually there is so much to be spoken about enthusiasm but we will not cover the other <laughs> five that way but um, <clears throat> that comes enthusiasm comes actually one more thing before i go to the next point all these three laziness apathy distraction all of these one thing is very common the more we a one thing that runs through all of them if you want to overcome all the three one thing common that is runs through all of them which i have seen is chanting in the association of other devotees ideally if possible with someone who has more taste in the holy name or at least some other few people that's very nice if we can come together to chant as often as possible well, that's a very good practice chanting in front of tulsi devi chanting with beads these are anything that is favorable whatever is you know this much extra benefit is there adopt it in your life early morning chanting ideal brahma muhurta ideal and very alert chanting so to remain alert whatever is necessary you have to do right actually your chanting should begin from the previous night preparation should begin from the previous day how you have to just like there was one person who, one devotee who told me his uh, friend is a air force pilot air force means um, fighting fighter plane he is a pilot of air force uh, fighter planes for them it is a rule it's a rule for them that before they come to the plane their fellow has to have good rest and he should not be intoxicated at least 8 hours before he should not have taken intoxication it's a rule otherwise they are thrown out it's a highly paid job high paid and why they say you have to have 8 hours forcibly you have to go to rest rest because he was telling he actually went and saw his friend took him in this fighter plane he said there are 350 controls and this goes at super speed you know supersonic speed and one little moment of inattentiveness it will just go into the ground is going at that speed and little direction ah zoom he just scratches somewhere you know and looks around 
and then he sees he's gone already into the ocean or whatever so that fellow has to be so attentive and there are so many controls he has to be alert absolutely alert so said you have to have so much of sleep you have to have so much of you know no other intoxication no other things like that they're paid for that it's only one or two hours of flying but they do so much within that so similarly we are flying flying our plane back home back to godhead too long a distance pantastu koti shatavat sara sambragamyo vayo ratha api manaso muni pungavanam they can't reach but we can reach and the only time we drive our plane is when we hold the mala in our hand remember little mistake and you will go away or you may go in the wrong direction <laughs> if you are not alert <clears throat> another thing another devotee once was telling is how he said he comes to our temple every day in chopati in uh, bombay he comes from about uh, a distance of 17 kilometers he travels and he said when he comes for mangalarti he comes <clears throat> in only 14 minutes not even 14 12 minutes or something but after bhagavatam class when he goes back it takes one and a half hours you know why traffic early morning he just comes absolutely no traffic but after 10 o'clock when he goes so much traffic in bombay gets stuck so he was telling similarly he said our japa early morning no traffic you know no other thoughts it's a clear highway express highway hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari hari <laughs> but then the long uh, the later it takes to chant the holy name hari krishna mm, <laughs> stuck there's one thought ye khatam karo tab tak nahi aage nahi badh sakta to the phone call has come somebody is knocking somebody is doing this stuck are krishna hare krishna <laughs> ram ram hare <laughs> so there so many traffic external traffic internal traffic all starts because of the mode of passion arises of course for some it may not be possible for so many reasons for some housewives their whole day you know, is peak hour service is from morning 5 to 8 absolutely not possible and because of their lifestyle or um, to do husband comes very late children are there like that everything so they have to spend some time eventually they have to go to bed at 11 and active most active part of the day is from 5 to 8 in the morning absolutely not able to do for some reasons or sometimes in the year students at for example examinations whatever at that time <clears throat> some places are like emergencies then you have to intelligently balance it but as far as possible in one sitting with a clear consciousness fully alert least distraction at least these things have to be considered but the point is uh, it should be an exclusive activity ex- special activity with least distraction most effort most alert part of the day and we eventually we have to mold our lives in such a way that we give quality time to these activities <coughs> that is how even we can uh, gradually overcome otherwise if we don't intelligently endeavor execute it with intelligence <coughs> if we don't intelligently plan our day intelligently plan our activities then eventually even though you are sincerely struggling gradually you will lose taste <coughs> so that is intelligence endeavor executed with intelligence <clears throat> and then yeah and uh, enthusiasm is lost uh, or enthusiasm cannot remain for long when there is no faith nischayat you have to have faith when you have full faith that you are on the right track 
then you will be enthusiastic one time three devotees we were driving to a place for a program very distant place from bombay and it was raining it was something like this season it was raining very hard and the devotee at the wheel he was driving trying to drive full speed we had very little time 10 minutes and we had lot of distance to cover and it was raining like anything we just couldn't see beyond 20 feet and at that time we came at a crossroad and at a crossroad there was no road signs there was no person around and we didn't know which road to take one of them led to the place where we are having the program so we were stuck and ultimately we said what to do okay we took out a coin heads we go this way tails we go like this heads we took the left turn we knew it was urgent we had to go quickly we have to reach there fast is getting late for the program but whatever you may know uh, he may have but somehow he just couldn't he press his legs on the accelerator with full heart why because he was not sure whether he's on the right track a kilometer later one old man was standing near the tree hey bhai ye waise hi jata hai kya kya वैसे ही वैसे ही वैसे ही जाता है क्या एक काम करो जिधर से आप आए ना पीछे थोड़ा जाओ ओ बैस दिस फॉलो जूम इमीडिएटली अंडरस्टूड एंड देन ही वेंट देयर एंड फ्रॉम देयर व्हेन ही टुक दैट ही वाज फुल ऑन द पेडल्स बिकॉज ही न्यू दैट नाउ आई एम ऑन द राइट ट्रैक ही वाज वेरी एंथुजियास्टिक बिकॉज ही हैड फेथ दैट ही वाज ऑन द राइट ट्रैक till then you know however he may want he just couldn't press on the accelerator with his heart because his heart was full of doubt am i on the right track because if i am not the more enthusiastic i am the more longer i have to come back <laughs> so nischaya you have to be sure that you are on the right track krishna does exist that is real life his devotional service is truth nitai charana satya tahara sevaka nitya so we have to be convinced of this fact intellectually analytically whatever but we have to full have faith and that when when that faith is there then naturally will be very enthusiastic because just that anticipation of the excitement that we are going to get just at the end of the road you are all the all more eager to run and get it because you know it awaits just at the end of this particular time so therefore faith is very important faith in what faith in the process of krishna consciousness bhagavan sambandha bhakti abhideya hoy prema prayojana vede tino vastu ka hai according to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu all the vedas is ultimately to know these three subject matter sambandha abhideya and prayojan gyan what is sambandha gyan who is god who am i what's my relationship abhideya how to reestablish that relationship which is lost since time immemorial and prayojan what will i get after i reestablish that relationship other than this there is nothing else in the vedic scriptures and these three principal truths can be understood through 10 10 principles it's called dashamula and the first thing is the vedic scriptures is axiomatic truth that is the proof praman shrimad bhagavatam pramanam amalam especially shrimad bhagavatam the conclusive निगम कल्प तरो गलित फलम दैट इज द प्योर प्रमाण प्रूफ फॉर ऑल दी अदर ट्रूथ्स द नेक्स्ट थ्री ट्रूथ्स इज 
supreme personality aradhya bhagwan brajeshatanaya the supremely most worshipable lord is none other than nanda nandana krishna secondly the supreme personality of godhead has immense and innumerable energies he is omnipotent he has inconceivable power he is potent and thirdly he is the reservoir of all mellows rasraj in him can be only find true taste true relationship otherwise all these relationships are temporary and they are illusory they can't give us true happiness these are the three truths and the next three truths refers to the individual soul the jivatma first and foremost the jivatma is part and parcel of krishna mamaivamsho jivaloke jivabhut sanatana second there are two kinds of living entities nitya baddha in the material world and nitya siddha in the spiritual world and third that the nitya baddhas have come to material existence and they by purifying their existence can go back to the spiritual world and what is the seventh truth or eighth the first one is pramana second is about the lord three truths three truths about the living entities and the eighth one is achintya bheda abheda tattva the individual soul is simultaneously one with and different from the lord this is a very important truth which discriminates the vaishnav philosophy from that of the impersonalistic mayavad philosophy then what is the ninth truth that relationship with the lord can only be established by the process of devotional service nothing else only by bhakti bhaktyamam abhijanati yavan yashyasmi tatvadah bhaktya tu ananya shakya aham evam vidhurjuna jyatum drashtum cha tatvena priyo praveshtum cha parantapa the only process is bhakti therefore chaitanya mahaprabhu told sanatan goswami this beautiful story about the sarvagya who went once to a, a poor man and told him there is a beautiful well, lot of wealth that your father has left go and search for it actually it's in your own house at the backyard but don't dig on the southern side because bees will come and sting you don't dig on the western side because a ghost will come and haunt you don't dig on the northern side because a snake will come and devour you scratch a little dirt on the eastern side and you will get the dust get the wealth don't get caught up southern side means the karma kanda don't get caught up in karma kanda don't get caught up in the gyana kanda it's like a ghost which haunts and you start speaking i am god don't get caught up in the yoga kanda which wants to eventually merge and lose one's existence engage in bhakti yoga that's in the eastern side so all these processes are useless without culminating in bhakti the bhakti is the process we have to have full faith that this is the only process there is no other way agyascha ashradhanascha samshayatma vinashyati na ayam lokosti na paro na sukham samshayatmana a doubting soul one who has doubts can never become happy in this world what to speak of the next doubt is the demon we have to kill this demon with the enthusiasm of devotional service so that is nishchaya then dhairya patience patience sometimes somebody may wonder enthusiasm and still patience it goes ill together you know impatience enthusiasm means restless to reach the goal but simultaneously say, be patient it is very important because the task that we have taken up 
is not an ordinary path. Bahu naam janma naam ante gyanavan maam prapadyate. After millions of lifetimes, Vasudevam Sarvamiti Sam Mahatma Sudurlabha, a rare soul understanding that cause of cause to be Krishna surrenders and goes full speed. Don't think simply by two, three years of enthusiasm you can get it. You have to have patience. Enthusiasm without patience is restlessness and kind of misdirected. And mere patience without enthusiasm, Krishna will show mercy one day or the other, so I will be relaxed. If you lack enthusiasm, you are allowing Maya to come and attack. If you have enthusiasm and no patience, that means you lack faith. Are, itne saal se japa ke abhi tak krupa nahi mila. Does really Krishna exist? What if I do all of this and finally find out that actually there is no Krishna in the spiritual world? There is no spiritual world at all. Some doubts like this come. Does this process really work? Now. It, it, it happens to all of us. We take a resolve. We will do this. We will do this. And after few weeks or few months of taking up some resolution, I will do this much. I will do this much of service. I will do this much of chanting. I will do this much. And after some time, you say, Kya kar rahe yaar? Thoda soch. Karte ja rahe, karte ja rahe. Itna time pass ho rahe. नहीं मिलेगा तो बाद में चार भगत लोगों ने बोल दिया तू कर रहा है वाह अरे हजार पूरी दुनिया कुछ और कह रही है सोच ले बस ए चांस दैट यू मे स्टार्ट फीलिंग विल डिस विल डिस्कस व्हाई 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 दैट थिंग गोज अवे विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर एक्सप्लेन्स व्हाट काइंड ऑफ अनर्थास दैट हिंडर आवर एंथुसियाजम he said, first thing is, Utsaha Mai. One anartha is Utsaha Mai. Utsaha Mai means, almost seems like enthusiasm of a pure devotee. Sometimes, when a new person comes into Krishna consciousness, you look at his enthusiasm and you say, Eh, hey, looks like a pure devotee here. Yeah? <laughs> I am there in six, seven years and you know, I don't have such an enthusiasm. So we find sometimes a new person is so enthusiastic. But that is Utsaha Mai. Why Utsaha Mai? Because there is naturally enthusiasm if it is something is new. The novelty of the spiritual experience. You know, it's a new kind of people, new hairstyle. New kind of clothing, new kind of environment, new kind of song, new kind of dance. Everything is new. So there is innovative and therefore there is enthusiasm. But afterwards, mantra <laughs> Same old ten people, <laughs> and then you start feeling. Uh, now I look some, you know, enthusiastically look for some other change. So that novelty may give some enthusiasm. It may not not last long. <clears throat> and novelty also because when a person comes new, everyone gives lot of attention to him. Hari Bol Prabhu, oh, you have come very nice. Afterwards. Why didn't you come yesterday? Who? <laughs> oh, you chanting one round. Hari bol, very nice. And a year later, what? Still only eight rounds? Huh? Kya yaar? Eight mala karta, fir usse gali bhi khana padta hai. So, no more 
your ego is you know bloated rather it is crushed <clears throat> and you feel you know proud new you know tilak kantimala vaishnav hum hai vaishnav but then after some time when you are not able to say ab tu vaishnav hai na karta hu beech beech mein kabhi kabhi very difficult because expectations are very high they keep on increasing <clears throat> it's like children beta what did you learn a b c d o oh, very nice all the 26 you know but after 4 years later what did you learn beta a b c d f <laughs> abhi tak a b c d kar raha hai <laughs> abhi x y z c a squared b squared c squared <laughs> so that novelty will be lost and then they will say yeah itna tak karta hu fir iske baad hi gaali padta hai chhodo so and krishna also gives free sample he is a good salesman you know good salesman gives first free sample so chaklo chaklo after 3 days chahiye paisa bharo so krishna also <clears throat> it's a fact it's a fact when you come first somehow you you feel so nice being in this particular environment but afterwards you start coming closer to devotees and then you see ye to bahut khata hai ye bhi aise hi hai jo main hu kaun sa bada hai when you start seeing too near then you start you know wondering so what's so great about it he also does the same thing i do he has also two eyes i have also two eyes in fact i jump little higher than him <laughs> so in this way the enthusiasm may go away utsahamai the second thing is <clears throat> ghana tarala very intense sometimes bo enthusiasm today every day want to chant 64 rounds and next day kal kar lenge aaj do kaafi hai you take a wow sometimes so enthusiastic kabhi ghana kabhi tarala kabhi khushi kabhi gam <laughs> so you know ghana ghana means intense you are very intense very enthusiastic and tarala means today is aaj mood nahi yaar biorhythm thoda low hai you know you don't feel like doing anything so that is um, phases of lethargy and phases of bursting enthusiasm sporadic enthusiasm then vyudha vikalpa the third kind of anartha vyudha vikalpa means that doubt assails one's resolve when doubts outweigh our belief then we become slack in our resolve this is what i was telling it's a fact sometimes after few years in devotional service suddenly you look at the books and says i have been missing out on so many other books how do i know that this is truth this particular organization glorifies so and so so and so but have i actually got am i missing out on something i mean truly this only so many people agree about this the whole world is thinking otherwise there are so many top scientists who have given other views and uh, am i on the right track you eh, start doubting the basics fundamental concepts a situation comes you really start wondering am i on the right track am i wasting time it's there somewhere in the back when you are when you are. it's just like a thief you know what an expert thief a thief comes into the household and sees that it's too bright everything is too bright so he goes and hides somewhere in one dark corner waits waits for a suitable time when it is dark and then springs from behind catches hold of that fellow similarly when we are bubbling with enthusiasm new in krishna consciousness and everything is fantastically going sadhana is going nicely reading is going association is having nicely everything is going nicely there is krishna surya sama maya hai andhkar 
Krishna is shining in our heart and therefore sadhana is good, everything is good and therefore these doubts are somewhere lingering, somewhere down. But because of, many a times because of physical chronic illnesses or lack of association for longer time, if you don't are not careful to, you know, take proper care, then what happens is there is some kind of a haziness and then these doubts manifest. Somebody rings up. Tere ko bola tha main. Das saal pehle bola tha yaad hai. Soch le tu kya kar raha hai. Ah, because now you are absorbed into that. This darkness. Easily maya can overcome. And then these doubts starts coming again, you know. Did we actually never went to the moon? Asa kaisa ho sakta hai. Dust is there. Things like that may manifest. So that is <coughs> viewed a vikalpa. Then another is vishaya sangara. Vishaya sangara means internal tug of war with sense gratification. In, in Christian terminology, it is called as dark night of the soul. What is dark night of the soul? Night 12 o'clock. At night 12 o'clock, six hours ago, the sun has set and six hours later, the sun is going to rise. Right? You are in the middle now. Night 12 o'clock. So, <clears throat> in bhakti, after a few years, then suddenly, you look at the, the western horizon. The sun of sense gratification has set. But taste for the holy name has not yet come. It is still six hours, hours to go. The sun of Krishna has not risen. Ruchi, bhava, prema has not come. And whatever little taste we had, that is set already. So we are in between. What the intelligence is convinced that there is taste, or sorry, the senses are convinced that there is taste in material sense gratification we have, because we have been doing it for such a long time. But the intelligence has been convinced that it is futile. So, sun has set of sense gratification. Unnecessary and unfavorable sense gratification. Not true sense gratification and <clears throat> what intelligence is convinced that that is real taste the senses are not experiencing what the senses have experienced intelligence says it is bad what the intelligence says is good the senses have no taste yet so it like in the in between position and there is a tug of war should I run this side or should I run this side that is called Vishaya Sangara. <clears throat> so, Bhoga Tyaga. Should I take up this process or this process, this process, this process? That kind of thing comes. Then, Niyamakshama. Niyamakshama means a person who is quite advanced but lacking mature bhakti. For such a person, of course, his doubts have been cleared to a large extent. His attachments to things of this world are slightly reduced. But he lacked fixed resolve to increase and improve devotional service. You know, I, my doubts are cleared. I have no more attachments to materialistic things. But at the same time, I am doing the same thing what I was doing so many years ago. My devotional service has neither increased in quantity nor quality. And such a person, Niyamakshama, and I don't have that thing to actually progress further also. You know, I'm just kind of sailing along or coasting, coasting along, you know, from the past. Initial push that was given a few years ago, 
the, the, the vehicle is rolling just because of that. But again, you know, that thing has not yet started. So that kind of feeling also sometimes comes. That is another kind of anartha. And finally, the last one, which is most powerful anartha to remove, is called Taranga Rangini. Taranga Rangini means the gross things have disappeared. Gross anarthas have disappeared. But the very subtle, seemingly inconspicuous anarthas are still there. And they are very difficult to deal with. At this time, a devotee is almost successful devotee. He's been established in the movement for a long time. People know him. He's got a position as probably the temple president or a big personality, big position of service. <clears throat> He's no more a neophyte. He is given up bhoga tyaga. He's not attached to these things of the world. You know, these things are insignificant for him. And he has absolutely very no doubts regarding bhakti process. He has all good qualities. He has determination, he has compassion, he has mercy, he has this, that. All good qualities are there. He has ribbon, risen above even mediocre devotion. Now he has become a steady devotee. But then, because he has become a steady devotee, that attracts puja, labha and pratishtha. Now it attracts a lot of wealth, lot of adoration, respect and lot of position. Eventually it will come. If you are steady, people are attracted. They give their wealth. They know that this is used for a right cause. Here, without even questioning, take a lot of wealth. The wealth starts coming. People start respecting, falling at your feet. And suddenly you start thinking, oh, I'm an exalted fellow. And you get a lot of position, a lot of facilities. So subtly, there is a chance that you did all of this because the, right, the higher, just like education. In education, for KG school, the test is write capital letter ABCD and write lowercase ABCD. But at the fourth standard, it's a little more high. At eighth standard, you are introducing algebra and certain kind of things. As you go higher up, the tests are also going to be higher. It's going to be of a higher nature. At that time, you won't be asked whether you chanted your 16 rounds. Nobody questions whether you asked, chanted your 16 rounds. You don't have to accountably give someone a sadhana card. Then, you know, like, there's a tendency, the independence is there. And potentially, uh, these kind of things may come in. And at that time, if we fall prey to that, then finish. Slowly, gradually, we lose that enthusiasm. And then, at that stage also, potentially, a man can reach stagnation and coast along as a senior devotee with a big position, but miss out the ultimate goal of life, pure devotion to Krishna. And therefore, at every stage, if you are not maintaining utsahat, nishayat, dhairyat, tattat karma pravartanat, sangatyagat, sato vritte, then we can anytime get stuck up. And therefore, a thorough knowledge of this and a, a always deep introspection. What's my goal? Where am I heading? Am I becoming complacent? How to overcome that? What steps, precautions have to be taken are all factors that must be considered. <clears throat> so this is about um, obstacles that may potentially creep in at any time in our life. So 
उत्साहात निश्चयात धैर्यात तत्तत कर्म प्रवर्तनात व्हॉट इज तत्तत कर्म प्रवर्तनात देर आर सो मेनी प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस इन द भक्ति रसामृत सिंधु नेक्टर ऑफ डिवोशन रूप गोस्वामी एनलिस्ट सिक्सटी फोर आइटम्स ऑफ डिवोशन and all the 64 items must be scrutinizingly studied they are like medicine they must be regularly taken if you regularly keep on taking the medicine then gradually health will come and live a hygienic life then health will come spiritual health vibrant health so tat tat karma pravartanat then sangatyagat we have to be very very careful about avoiding that kind of association or attachment which is unfavorable to our progress in krishna consciousness now it's very interesting there are two verses in the first verse atyahar prayasascha prajalpo niyama graha jana sangascha carefully avoiding materialistic association and then in the uh, in the do's it says sangatyaga give up the association of materialistic people why would rupa goswami in a book which contains the only essence no redundancy why should he write two times so it obviously means this sangatyaga is much more than simply material association of materialistic people what is that it is said <coughs> sanga means two things sanga means association and sanga also means attachment sangatya sangat sanjayate kamah whatever you associate that kind of desire you develop whoever you associate with so one should carefully avoid the association of non devotees who are the non devotees those who are not subordinate to the lord are non devotees they could be gyanis who feel that i want to become the lord once i become self realized i become god god cannot control me a bhakti is simply a temporary process is stepping stone to impersonal merging so that kind of people we have to give up or fruity people fruity workers materialistic ritualists or uh, materialistic uh, people who are attached to only things of this world or those who are purely demigod worshipers thinking that that is the ultimate goal of life they are all ultimately one they are attached to dry logic or they are simply uh, yogis whatever you know different kinds of people or who say that lord is a figment of imagination ye sab nahi hai or whatever there are different kinds of people anyway who are not those who are not subordinate to the lord these are one kind of association and the second association is with women now what does women mean women means prakriti prakriti means i am purusha this is for me to be enjoyed so for a woman man is a woman and for man woman is a woman a woman means an object to be enjoyed prakriti sambhashya so any person who wants to in this very lifetime cross over the ocean of birth and death should take up this uh, instruction seriously that any kind of again unnecessary and unfavorable kind of intimate association with the opposite sex must be avoided of course there are two kinds of renunciates uh, two kinds of vaishnavas householders and renunciates for renunciates absolutely it is to be avoided but for householders associating with wife or 
you know, other members in the family or relatives. And that should be done very discreetly, not for unnecessary sense gratification or not with a desire to just kind of enjoy, but just to do whatever is necessary. So, uh, these are, I mean, there's a lot, but just to know the essence. And the second kind of Sangha is uh, attachment. Now, attachments are of two kinds. Attachment to assets and attachment to prejudices. Attachment to assets means getting attached to some things of this world, to a house, to a vehicle, to whatever, to a particular kind of furniture, particular kind of situation. That's attachment to a particular situation or particular kind of things, external things. Another kind of attachment is attachment to some deep-rooted prejudice or um, ideas which are not based on truth. They come in. Sometimes, Asha, these prejudices are also of two types. These prejudices are of two types. And what are they? Ancient and current. Current means prejudices that have been developed in this very lifetime. Ye sare Gujarati log aise hi hai. I, I remember, it's a fact, a devotee. He was, he was driving with me one day and his father, he was first in what is now as Pakistan and during freedom struggle uh, during the independence time when there was partition of India and Pakistan all this his, pa his father and his whole family they had to move with their women and all their properties to this side and people from here had to go on that side and during that time what they faced was so such an experience such an experience such a horrible nightmare that they just can't give up looking at that community with a deep-rooted uh, prejudice. And it seems his father told him, I'm just telling the fact, so if people of that community is here, please do not get offended. Because Vaishnavas, we are not, connect, not connected with this or that. Vaishnavism goes beyond all this communal kind of thing. But this person told me, he was finding it so difficult to come out of this. He hates the Muslim community. Because he saw right in front of his eyes, his wife was tortured and raped and so many things, you know, like, he can't, very difficult for such a person to give up. And he saw people being slaughtered mercilessly. Both sides, of course. That side feel like this and they feel like that. But the fact is, his father told him, Beta, दो प्रकार के मुसलमान अच्छे हैं बस जो भी तक पैदा नहीं हुए और जो जमीन के नीचे गाड़े गए कैन यू इमेजिन एंड हिज फादर एज लॉन्ग एज ही लिव्ड इन बॉम्बे वुड नेवर इवन परचेज गुड्स फ्रॉम ए शॉप विच इज ओन्ड बाय अ मुस्लिम फेलो ही हैड सच डीप दैट्स नॉट ट्रू इट कांट बी ट्रू नॉट एवरी वन इज ऑफ द सेम नेचर बट बिकॉज ऑफ दैट experience, he developed a deep-rooted prejudice. Some people develop about some communities, particular sex, particular creed, particular whatever. This is a current thing developed somewhere along our consciousness and that is very difficult to give up. And that is an obstacle in Krishna consciousness. You can't properly uh, respect truth when you are caught up in these kind of prejudices, your respect for truth is lost. And therefore, uh, one should be carefully, scrutinizingly find out some deep-rooted prejudices against a particular <coughs> group, a particular, whatever group that may be, classification. And second kind of prejudices is ancient. Ancient means come from previous life. Some people are too ritualistic 
born in ritualistic families some have natural deep rooted impersonalism in their heart gyana gyana mishra or or kind of prejudices or karma mishra prejudices they very difficult even after coming to krishna consciousness when they see that proper rituals are not followed and some kind of etiquette some kind of things are not done it becomes an obstacle in their advancement they start committing offenses to people who are not following all these rituals perfectly or some kind of impersonal thing is also there gyan kind of thing from previous life times swabhava jena that is swabhava so <clears throat> sangatyaga that kind of attachment that kind of association must be given up because they become like an obstacle it's like it's like you're driving a car applying uh, accelerator one feet on the accelerator and another feet on the brake also what will happen you're pressing accelerator on one leg and with another leg you're pressing the brake also it's like that if you don't give up these prejudices now these deep rooted prejudices can't go till the point of death or suicide it can't go it's so deep rooted it can't go and what is the hope for all of us the hope is association of pure devotees a moment's association of a pure devotee can potentially remove not only the current prejudice but the deep rooted prejudices of lifetimes in a moment that's the power of a association of a pure vaishnav one time we were in uh, in uh, nityanand prabhu's uh, place birth place um, ekachakra and at that time sachinandan maharaj and uh, radhanath swami maharaj were sitting now his holiness radhanath swami maharaj comes from jewish background and his holiness sachinandan maharaj comes from german background and they were speaking and the german uh, sachinandan maharaj grandfather i think was a soldier the second world war occupying a big position so radhanath swami maharaj was telling who knows my grandfather probably was a fighter and both were fighting each other probably they shot each other and today both of us are sitting and glorifying each other embracing each other he said this is simply because of nityanand prabhu's mercy otherwise a german and jew can you imagine what hitler did to the jews if you were to be there you would hate german for lifetimes even just like india pakistan some similar what they saw slaughtering of people butchering wholesale mass annihilation but then just by coming in association with prabhupad everything is forgotten mahaprabhu predicted bhakti vinod thakur predicted when will the day be when people from all nations people from all walks of life all different castes all creed all different sexes everyone will come together in the holy land of navadweep and chant jai sachinandana which was fulfilled by prabhupad in 1976 i think from so many countries they all came dancing together this is the only ground on which these all other things can be removed narad muni there was this mrgari deep rooted uh, killing animals he is born with such a culture he became from mrgari he became a great vaishnav valmiki such a low family so deep rooted prejudices but moments association with narad muni gave him a, a, such an exalted position so we find sangatyagat and finally sato vritte he sato vritte means sadhu vritti 
Satopurte means practicing in the footsteps of the previous Acharyas. Mahajano Yenagata Sapantha. And Bhakti Vinod Thakur says there are two kinds of Mahajans ancient Mahajans and modern Mahajans. Who are ancient Mahajans? Swambhu, Narada, Sambhu, Kumaro, Kapilo, Manu, Pralado, Janako, Bhishmu. They are all ancient Mahajans. And who are modern Mahajans? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his followers. The Goswamis. And all his intimate associates. They are modern because just recently, 500 years ago, they appeared. If we deeply, scrutinizingly study <coughs> their life and their instructions, and if we try to follow it in our own lives, then it's a path of all auspiciousness. So therefore, one should scrutinizingly study the lives of great devotees in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And of course, we are so, so fortunate that we have in the most immediate recent past of such a exalted Mahajan in the form of his divine grace of Prabhupada who was personification of all the Mahajans in front of us and fortunately for us every aspect of his life his, his talks his example, his uh, mm, conversations have been recorded, which we can see, which we can hear, which we can actually experience so closely. This is great fortune. His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj, ask him any question and immediately he says, this question was asked to Prabhupada and how he would, he was for them, whatever Prabhupada did, finish, that's it. And that's how actually we see that they were able to achieve perfection. Such a from the lowest grade of degraded, degraded civilization, simply by following in the footsteps of Prabhupada, not imitating, but following in his footsteps, understanding the principle, these people achieved such an exalted position. One time, Prabhupada was giving a lecture. He was talking about the Mahajans. He was telling about, so these are the 12 Mahajans. So as he ended the talk, one disciple from the audience said, and Prabhupada, you are the 13th Mahajan. And Prabhupada was silent, and he looked at that devotee, and he said, and you are the 14th. What it meant was, just follow in their footsteps and you also become a Mahajan. By following in the footsteps of Mahajans, you become a Mahajan. That's the secret. Sato Therefore, we have to scrutinizingly study the lives, the examples and the instructions left behind by these great Mahajans. Deeply study. And then, understanding the principles and adjusting the details, we have to follow those instructions in this day and age. It is a very simple, very straightforward and very auspicious path back home to the spiritual world. So in this way, these are the six items that are favorable being enthusiastic, utsahat, nishchayat, developing full faith, dhairyat, having patience, tattat karma, scrutinizingly following all the uh, injunctions, rules and regulations, sangatyaga, carefully avoiding the association and attachment of unnecessary, unwanted, unfavorable things, people, and Satovrtehe, following in the footsteps of those great souls who achieved the perfection of life, successfully achieved 
in the perfection of life by following the process and they have left behind a trail if you simply follow that trail it is a assured guaranteed way for success so by studying the lives examples and teachings of these exalted vaishnavas we can also go back so we end here if there are any questions comments clarifications yes prabhu okay one minute we'll pass the mic you can ask the question there <coughs> hari krishna prabhu ji prabhu ji in our student life when we were uh, in the base that time we used to have a very active part in like all the activities but now just we have joined the job so you know after coming you know from office to base uh, somehow body also doesn't cooperate and already so much like outside people dealing with outside people so we feel that now we are not able to do you know what used to do uh, previously so again like initially enthusiasm is not there because of whole day's hectic schedule plus when that thought comes ki now we are not actively in you know participating in uh, base services or you know another event so again it uh, depresses like uh, and how to uh, you know deal with this situation where we practically finds no time one time one um, devotee he he reads lot of chaitanya charitamrita he has finished three times bhagavatam he has finished four times all this he does in the train only bombay local train because he hardly gets any time so he approached on sanyasi and told him i was there because i was translating so i know he said maharaj i am simply you know i want to give up all this nonsense all work and simply sit in one place and read chaitanya charitamrita and bhagavatam all the books of prabhupada and the reply to him was very good wonderful he was so enlivened sanction he said now with this consciousness you continue your work <laughs> with this i aspire your aspiration should be my god so much of activity just to maintain this body just to maintain this setup when will that day be when i'll be able to and run when will i get a consciousness to run to the temple associate with devotees drink the nectar if this is your consciousness you are safe wherever you are you are safe but if that consciousness is getting affected then actually you should drop everything and run because that is dangerous position so it our society thankfully is international society for krishna consciousness so it's a, all a question of consciousness if our consciousness is pure aspiring for the ideal thing while do the necessary do whatever is necessary to sustain maintain and go on with certain responsibilities and actually even to do those responsibilities in a krishna conscious way in a mood of serving in a mood of offering this gift to krishna i'll do my best studies i'll do so nicely and do my best and leave the rest to krishna for the result i leave it to krishna but i do my best as an offering one time one devotee asked he said that maharaj you are saying that you be the best businessman for krishna be the best student for krishna be the best whatever for krishna but then all the businessmen work 18 hours a day 
If I work like them, I can't come to temple. I can't chant. I can't do. I can't do this, 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 this. So, you say be best also, be best devotee also, best businessman also, best student also, best everything. How can I be? So the reply was, <coughs> Krishna, uh, sorry, Arjuna, and. Karna, both were, or rather actually Karna was better archer than Arjuna. But in the eyes of Krishna, Arjuna was the best archer. So he said, become the best in the eyes of Krishna, not in the eyes of the material world. In the material world, who is the best businessman? Who earned the most profit? Thus. To hell with his future life, what he's currently doing, what is his consciousness, what is his state of happiness, nothing is considered, only superficially considered. What is his list on the top 10? That is the best businessman. But, but, but we should strive to become the best of whatever we are in Krishna's eyes. So we do the business for Krishna in the sense, after nicely having performed our sadhana, rest of the energy, qualitatively, we put our best into that. And I can say for one thing at least, for sure, it is not actually the quantity of work, it is the quality of work which counts. And if your consciousness is prepared through proper practices, spiritual practices, then in two hours what you can do, somebody else cannot do it even in four hours. It is a fact. For example, during examinations, just a week left before exam, when you sit and study, have you noticed how you grasp things? You gobble up pages after pages. And every student thinks, if I study like this throughout the year, 100% next time, flying colors. And the moment the exam is finished, <laughs> finished, you can't have that same attentiveness, same grasping power. You know why? Can someone say why this happens at that time? Yes, Prabhu. So fire is there, fear is there. Light the fire. Fear, the point is, there is so less time and I need to do so much. And therefore, all distractions go away. You become more focused. Very little time, I have to do so much. Every other thing, distractions go away and you become very focused. That same thing is, the fire and fear is lost immediately after exam because so much time is there, only so much is to be done. But for a devotee, it is 24 hours a day, 365 days a year like that. Because he knows, I have so much to do for Krishna, for family, for occupation, for this, for my relatives, friends, whatever. And therefore, every moment is important. This much is the only time I dedicate. And when I give, I give full. Finish. Then I go here, I give my full. And therefore, he functions at his best at every moment. Because he's giving you his best. Because the fire is there. The fire is there because he knows I'm doing it for Krishna. It should be the best offering. Why offer a dry, rotten flower? I will offer the best flower. What do you offer? The result, the result of your examination. I am putting this effort not to gain name and fame and prestige or a seat or something. I am putting my best for the pleasure and satisfaction of Krishna and Vaishnavas. Then whatever happens, I accept it as Krishna's mercy. So therefore, such a person becomes efficient. 
yes when you have time actually that desperate feeling that you get when you are outside and feeling i wish i was there i wish i could be doing the proof of that is when you actually get time what do you do when you actually get time at that time you say not today tomorrow i'll go that means it's not genuine but if genuinely you are feeling like that when will that time be when i'll drop all this and go there and that is you are healthy you are in healthy consciousness does that answer your question yeah adisham prabhu you would like to add something you have more experience Yeah. One minute. Use the mic. Hare Krishna. Prabhu ji, you said uh, chanting in Brahma Murta is the best. But sometimes, like when we need to go for company very early and all, so completing all sixteen rounds, it's not possible. And chanting in night is also not good. So, is it? prefer to chant before mangalarti some round the whole idea is this is a this is our lifeline activity you understand what is lifeline activity it's the most important activity in our because that retains the consciousness for the activity or the quality of consciousness throughout the day therefore when you do that it you should be very alert number 1 number 2 it should be the environment the condition within and without should be as favorable as for possible so intelligently think what is best for you you should be alert and the conditions should be as favorable as possible as many favorable things can come so much better if absolutely not possible some time of the day but do it like uh, what i have felt is before mangalarti how much ever round i do it will be the best like uh, i can hear it very clearly and it goes very good so that's good that time is the best but you have to decide according to your schedule i know people who just because of that situation get up so late and sleep throughout the whole day in the sense you know are are, are not at all alert throughout the day what is the use of that you know what is the use of that and problem what to speak of that even during the chanting they are sleeping at least i have seen experience like that so therefore plan out your life in such a way unnecessary activity drop it if you want to go to bed early every moment think you know is it really necessary if not i go to bed no what do you say time pass or gradually mold your life in such a way that you are able to take sufficient rest to be alert for this activity just like i gave the plain example that's why you have, the point is you have to be alert with a relish and the environment should be as favorable as possible so if you are not alert what is the use of that time even though favorable time is there but if you are not alert what is the point but you have to judge it you have to balance these things so many things are ideal but then unfortunately kaliyuga our work occupation is not ideal what a timing what a timing completely you know one one week this call center a demoniac lifestyle there is no the body will go crazy the body doesn't understand this language eh khana aa gaya abhi the body says eh i am supposed to take rest now and now i have to digest the food and now i am feeling sleepy now get up but last last week was different this schedule is different now this is 8 to 12 or 8 to 2 then next week 2 to 10 then 10 to... body will go crazy of course as long as you are fit it may adjust for some time but it break up what to do that's the only job available for somebody 
he can't actually he can't do anything i mean there are so many things you have to consider you do your best and leave the rest to krishna he, that is his headache what can you do with proper guidance with proper intelligence you decide try to do it krishna is a person thankfully a very considerate person he understands the spirit behind the endeavor that is saving grace he sees we will discuss this in the evening krishna sees the the spirit the heart it says man man sees the lips god sees the heart man sees the result god sees the endeavor have you with your best intelligence with best guidance taken the proper decision and after deciding that to the, are you endeavoring to the best of your ability if you are doing it forget it don't generally sometimes people land up in so much misery and uh, self created anxiety simply by comparing themselves with someone else's situation you don't have to compare yourself you are what you are somebody else is what they are somebody can do without food somebody can has to eat so much food somebody can do with so much rest you may not be able to do so much with rest somebody body is differently made you can't compare you can compare compare with your own self you have to go on you know don't remain at the same level try to go on improving bas take inspiration from those who are doing something very nicely but you don't try to imitate them you be yourself apply those principles and intelligently apply it in your life with guidance that's why endeavor executed with intelligence you have to use your intelligence and in krishna consciousness krishna consciousness means motive is pure and under proper guidance after that forget it just leave it to krishna it's krishna's responsibility i've taken guidance i use my intelligence this is the best thing i can do under the circumstances till whatever situation becomes further better krishna please accept this krishna to him that's more important than what time it was done how would you do how would you do whatever like that so krishna sees the spirit behind that activity the the, the consciousness the mood so to the needful understand the basic principles apply the details according to time place and circumstance does it make it clear yeah somebody yeah, yeah. i will come to you about association we are stressing so much but uh, while a devotee like uh, in case of mrigari and narad simultaneously when mrigari was getting good association of narad narad was getting bad association of mrigari so <laughs> how we can justify that we can always remain in good association very thank you very much for a very important point that your question can bring out and that is what is association and how to associate that's what we are going to discuss in the next session however i'll give you the principle there is what's really association association does not mean sitting in the same bus buying food stuffs from the same grocery shop no or sitting in the same classroom together that's not association association means where there is a heart to heart exchange that you should not do with these kind of people so there is you can you can give your association you may not take their narada was giving his association he was not taking mrigari's association that means narada was revealing his heart 
but he was not hearing attentively to the convictions or the understandings opinions of mrigari so you can give your association but you need not take their association and association actually means the loving exchanges heart to heart not dutiful exchange also dutiful exchange means it's a duty you have to sit in front of your boss for such a long time or whatever and next colleague of yours happens to be a lady what to do you have to sit in that they share the same computer or whatever you know as a student you have to be in the lab and your partner happens to be opposite sex what do you do sometimes it happens so what to do that doesn't mean heart to heart what do you think about the goal of life <laughs> really my heart has a feeling that this is it what do you feel not necessarily hi hi bye <laughs> bas you may sit for hour together and not have a single association in a moment you can get lot of association when you keep your everything open heart ears eyes fully open absorb or sometimes you are there but everything closed so everything bounces back so it depends whether you want to take it or you want to give it when you want to do it how you want to do it how much you want to do it we'll discuss that next so what you have asked is a logical sequence for the next class <laughs> naturally that thing arises in our heart uh, discuss that in the afternoon yeah there was one hand here there there yeah yes are krishna bro uh you spoke about a situation wherein uh, like you described a devotee uh, who is you described as just just keep on sailing just you know in the initial push was there and he just keeps on sailing so for a devotee of that in that circumstances say he is with the fact given fact that he doesn't have many opportunities to interact with devotees or to you know, when when he loses that he ob obviously loses track of krishna consciousness altogether but then you know, he makes an honest effort to just keep going but of course he's not making much progress so in that situation what would be ideal for him to do bro <clears throat> we have to intensify the quality of devotional service at least for in some reason you can't improve the quantity anymore try to improve the quality and you can simultaneously also try to improve the quantity just look at the life of a materialistic person he every situation he sees how i can extract something from here also what is called as multitasking you know while doing that i want to enjoy little music also they want to do that they use their intelligence how i can do what i like simultaneously what i have to do so if you have if you are really desperate krishna gives intelligence sarvasya jaham hridi sannivishtu he is situated in everyone's heart if you are desperate krishna gives you the intelligence it comes as inspiration when archimedes was so desperate to know krishna gave him the knowledge of buoyancy and where did he give by taking bath in the bath tub because that fellow who discovered the benzene ring what is that kekule or whatever he was so desperate through a dream or a vision he saw a snake biting its own tail ah ring form yes hexagonal benzene ring so when when your desire is deeply to know how i can come closer in this situation in the current situation krishna will give intelligence he can speak through your heart in dream or through someone else prabhupada was desperate about preaching 
one man, ordinary man, to whom he was distributing this pamphlet said, why do you sell pamphlets like this? Put all these pamphlets together, make it a book and sell. I was said, my Guru Maharaj is speaking through you. And he followed that. So, it's a question of intensifying our desire. If you have a desire, where there is a will, there is a way. You will for it. You strongly desire for it. You dream about it. Think about it. Speak about it. I want to do it. I want to do it. And it will happen. That is a fact. That is a fact. There is no barrier for devotional service. Ahaituki apratihata. No material situation is a barrier for increasing our devotional service. It's a question of using your best in terms of intelligence, in terms of whatever. Develop a desire. Don't give up. Giving up means losing to Maya. Actually, Krishna sees the endeavor. That endeavor itself is successful. Even though you practically could not achieve much, but that endeavor is successful. Just like Jatayu. Jatayu fought with Ravana. He knew I am fighting a losing battle. Ravana is in his, he is youthful, he is very powerful. I am an old man. He could have justified, said, Abhi, ladke bhi kya fayda, kuch hone wala to nahi hai na? Marne hi wala hon. But he said, anyway I am going to die, but let me try. I will try my best. And he was successful. Even though externally he failed. But it was successful in the eyes of Lord Ram because on that very same day, Lord Ram personally performed his last funeral rites, sent him back to the spiritual world. That very day. So from a materialistic point of view, he was unsuccessful. But spiritually he was successful. Because Krishna saw that endeavor. So don't worry, whatever situation you are, you do your best. Try and aspire to increase the quantity, or quality at least, and if possible the quantity also. Krishna will give you intelligence how to do it. That's a fact. It will happen. And if with all of that, whatever you have done, then no problem. In one second, Krishna can make you a pure devotee. What's difficult for him? In one second, he can remove all anarthas go away. From inside, he'll just blow, you know. Finished. You see, he, our endeavor, we have to put out our, right, up to him, how he does it, when he does it. Dhairya, have patience. But whatever situation he puts us, just what we need to purify ourselves. Have faith and just go on. Does that make sense? Yeah, one hand somewhere here was raised. Yes. Prabhuji. Tell me, Radhisham Prabhu, when you have to stop? Five, ten minutes, okay. Prabhuji, you are telling about that chanting in the morning, it's like no traffic is there. But sometimes what happens in the day if there is some like exam or some very important thing is going to happen. So our mind is hooked to that and it disturbs very much in his chanting. So what can we do at that time so as to focus on chanting? Yeah, that very na uh, natural. That's very natural because you you are not like a machine. Switch off. Only chanting now, okay? Okay, switch off. Abhi, service chalu. <laughs> it's not a machine, you know. Okay, tube light off, fan on, fan off, tube light off. Aisa thodi hota hai. You say mind. So it's natural that the spillover will be there from one to the other. And to the extent there is pressure on one side, spillover will be more. Right? It's natural. However, it shouldn't become a regular feature. As long as it is exam, okay, six days of examination, okay. But for the rest of the year, if you are thinking about the exam and becoming too much anxi anxiety, and it keeps on spilling over into your japa time only, 
not throughout the other day. Other day you sleep. No anxiety. Only japa, are, are, krishna, japa, what about my exam? That means maya is hooking on to something to become miserable. You know, we need something to become miserable. Some excuse to lament. So, if it's a very important thing, it may. As long as it is also a service, that's not so bad. If it is sense gratification that you're thinking about, that's not good. But if it is some service, just like on Janmashtami, so many services, invariably, however you chant, some ideas will, hey, why don't you put that bamboo like this? I think we adjust that, you know. Because it's urgent, it's coming up. And there's no time. And somehow you have to finish your rounds also. So, these two becomes very difficult. So it will spill over. And the pressure is too much, right? it will spill over, no problem. As long as it is an occasional feature. If it's not, then you better consult someone. Yeah, only that time, all the problems come only during Japa. Keep spilling over into our Japa time. And that is not a very healthy sign. But sometimes exams, that this, naturally it's a very important thing. Because it also helps in our, it also eventually affect our devotional service. So therefore, we're thinking about that. And as long as, immediately after that you should come back to normal. It's like main road is damaged, so you take a bypass. But you take a bypass not to remain in the bypass always. Then you will bypass your goal. <laughs> take a bypass and as soon as you see that okay, main road is alright, come back to the main road. So for one week you take, took a detour. Japa was not so very good. But immediately after that back to square one. And back to normal. Otherwise, something is wrong. And if it is service oriented, then it's all right. It's not so bad. Though that's not the ideal, it's not so bad. But if it is some other unimportant thing, unnecessary thing, unfavorable thing, that's not healthy. There are two questions. From whom should see that Krishna or Guru is speaking? From materialist or only through devotees? <laughs> Krishna can speak through anyone. To uh, One devotee, he spoke through a prostitute. Chintamani. She spoke. What is this nonsense? Bilvamangal Thakur. To Bilvamangal Thakur, Krishna spoke through a prostitute. Through Prabhu, to Prabhupada, he spoke through. But it's not that you go looking for a prostitute. <laughs> My dear Mataji, please speak. Because Krishna will speak through you. <laughs> That's not the regular process through which Krishna speaks. <laughs> Krishna generally has a pakka spokesman, clear, delineated spokesman. Guru, Sadhu and Shastra and Vaishnavas who repeat the word of Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. But a, a devotee is always alert, keeps his eyes and ears open to see because every element of creation can potentially speak to us about something or the other. We can learn a don't or a do from something. Everything we can learn. What not to do, what to do. 
just like the 24 gurus about that um, in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a man describing 24 gurus. He says, from a prostitute I learned something. From the ocean I learned how to become a grave. From the earth I learned how to be tolerant. So many people are exploiting the earth, but she is tolerant. From the sky I learned this. From the tree I learned this. Tranadapisu, Taroriva Sahishnuna. Never complaining. If you are desperate, if you are open, if you are always eager to hear Krishna's message, Krishna can speak through any and every, even every atomic particle. Every situation will teach a lesson. So Krishna can speak through anyone. But generally, that's what a high stage. If you don't understand Krishna's language, then you may misunderstand some other language as Krishna spoke to me. Yesterday night, one fellow told me, I think you should drink and get intoxicated, then chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> Krishna spoke through his heart. How do you know whether Krishna spoke or your false ego, Maya used some of your relatives or some of your friends or neighbors as her agent. Was he Krishna's agent or was he Maya's agent? How will you know? Through Guru Sadhu Shastra. And of course, Phalena Parichiyate. Ultimately, the proof is by the result. Prabhupada followed that man and he distributed hundreds, thousands of books. Bilumangal Thakur followed that prostitute and left everything and went to Vrindavan and achieved Krishna. That is the proof. But we can't wait till the proof and then say that was Krishna or Maya. So better we take a safer route. Guru Sadhu and Shastra. But many a times we keep alert and judge some people's opinion, weigh it according to Guru Sadhu Shastra and may respond. What made and is making to strictly following and continuing in Krishna consciousness so enthusiastically. What made and is make, making you to strictly following and continuing is Krishna consciousness so enthusiastically. Thank you for your compliment that you see some enthusiasm even in this dull-witted fellow. <laughs> And mainly prayers of Vaishnavas like you probably will continue to make me remain and continue enthusiastically. It is simply association of devotees, sincere devotees that made us enthusiastic and that will continue to keep us enthusiastic. If that is not there, it is infectious. Enthusiasm, Prabhupada would give the example of Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin, you know, when Sham Sundar Prabhu and Malti Mataji, they were going to America. So they were asking Prabhupada, and I think around that time or something around to that effect, Prabhupada said, simply be enthusiastic. Wildly, I mean, you are something, what you are doing is something different from the society. Do it enthusiastically. Whatever anyone does enthusiastically, people follow. Hey, kuch to maza hona chahiye log aisa naach rahe. Kuch log hamhe naach ke dekhte. Prabhupada gave the example of Charlie Chaplin. Charlie Chaplin was, he went to the ballroom and he was dancing and then he got a little tired and sat down. And sat down. When he woke up, when he got up, his coat, tail coat, that got stuck somewhere and trrr, it just got torn. And it became, you know, two tails. <laughs> and so he went around and, you know, they, they have that um, skating kind of a thing. They skate along and hold their girl and move around like this. So suddenly he just went and saw himself in the mirror. That is torn. So what he did was he caught hold of the two and <coughs> tore it further, you know, till the neck. He tore it like this. And then came 
and so enthusiastic starting whirling about zoom zoom like that he said wow what is this guy doing it is something amazing what makes him so enthusiastic he is like us only oh only the tail coat is different <laughs> maybe that's what we have to do become enthusiastic <laughs> everyone started tearing <laughs> and ultimately everyone was you know even a fellow who had a good tail coat also torn it so similarly they see wow they shaven it at guys with tilak and ganti mala dancing joyful blissful what makes them they are actually same two eyes you know one nose everything hey no hair style is different <laughs> dress is different things are different maybe by doing that whatever you do i will also do maybe i will also become enthusiastic and propa writes in one one particular situation imitation of a good thing is appreciated so <laughs> associate with such kind of enthusiastic devotees that is the secret to become enthusiastic and to remain enthusiastic when death creeps in determination to serve decreases what is the solution should we engage in service without thinking about the mm, development doubt without thinking about the doubt or get them clarified making it a serious issue actually devotional service cannot be stopped even at the time of death the proof is we saw bhakti tirth maharaj livingly living his body recently that is a glorious example of victory over death even death could not stop him from his devotional service if you hear 15 days before he left his body he was simply bones and skin but if you hear his cassette what he spoke you don't even realize that he was about to die a person about to die shriveled up only bones and skin as good as any other time in the pink of his health when he was giving the lecture so devotional service is beyond the body of course when the situation is not again same thing whatever energy is there that energy should be used in krishna service i was thinking recently not recently a few months back i saw prabhu pad's last days how many of you have seen that last lesson the final lesson quite a few i was told not to see it because for a person who has seen prabhu pad in his hey days preaching like a world acharya it's very painful to the heart to see his last days how he was absolutely shriveled up absolutely no strength and especially when he leaves his body the way they did the samadhi and all that very painful to the heart but as the nature of human being when somebody says don't see something your enthusiasm i mean your uh, curiosity ne ne ek bar dekh lete kya hai kya nahi dekhna chahiye humko <laughs> so some of it got told of one cassette and i said only once i will see what not to be seen and i put it and i saw and one thing bewildered me little i should frankly say it bewildered me and i was a little offensive also i saw prabhu pa two days before he left his body i think two or three days he was lying in his bed absolutely no strength nothing it's just bag of bones and skin that's all no muscle completely the cheek is gone in the bones are protruding the eyes are completely sunk very difficult to see someone in that situation whom i've already seen in different situation and he was uh, but even at that stage mike was kept so close to him and they would read the translation of shrimad bhagavatam 13th chapter 10th canto and he was translating perfect consciousness 
perfect consciousness giving a purport completely healthy in terms of consciousness irrespective of the bodily condition but i was thinking why why do this ke natak kar raha hai kya i i i should say i, should, I was really offended so why should he do it after all even if he lives for a few days he will translate about 30 40 verses what's going to make a difference already he has translated the whole 10th canto why struggle to translate even at this time but then later i heard another devotee telling another story about another person and that gave me this realization that this is the nature of a liberated soul Lib- what is liberated who is liberated who is liberated from the bodily concept and yesterday as we were discussing he was fixed that i am not the gross body i am not the subtle body i am the spirit soul okay and what is the nature of the spirit soul jivero swarup hoy krishna nitya das and if you are the das then you have to serve your master under whatever circumstances if you have only so much energy use that energy for serving krishna if you have so much energy use that energy for serving krishna so when he had full energy he was going full blast he had only so much energy he was using that in krishna service because what is the use of life without service to krishna it is spiritual death so for a devotee life means preaching death means no preaching such a person is spiritually dead and therefore whatever energy he had he was using it i am a servant i have to serve today so much energy is there i'll serve with so much energy tomorrow nothing is there theek hai with that itself i'll try to think about krishna if i have no energy to speak i'll not speak i'll think about krishna if that thinking also stops hare krishna that is a self realized soul iha yasya harer dasye karmana manasa gira nikhila shopi avastha su jeevan mukta sauchate in this life one who engages body mind and words in the service of krishna under all circumstances such a person is jeevan mukta even though within the body he is actually transcended the bodily concept of life that is a proof so coming back to your question death is not at all fearful huh when death creeps in determination to serve decreases determination to serve decreases because of fear but for a person who realizes i'm not the gross and subtle body that fear also goes away of course artificially we can't imitate at this stage but right now we begin the process wherever we are what are the solution solution is become more krishna conscious should we engage in service without thinking about the doubt yes because to remove the doubt service is the proof when we engage in service and we see the result when there is a doubt think about the initial days which gave you enthusiasm or any other time when you experienced immense um spiritual charge because of engaging in proper devotional service it's a fact during very very intense service some situations comes when you are absolutely engaged in it have no time for anything and you get exhausted but later looking back at that time you feel so nice ah i was so engaged at that time you know like what you were saying at that time when you were in base you were doing so much but now looking back you feel oh at those time were so nice but you didn't feel it when you were probably there yaar ye bhi karna hai wo bhi karna hai bhav re kitna karna hai but when you look back you say my god those were the very pleasant days so remembering that probably again introspect what made you happy what what was the situation which made you enthusiastic so and engage in that and what made you lethargic and at that time it was very nice when you were sleeping but afterwards you feel miserable so think about those things think about the positive and then go ahead so 
thinking about the doubt or get them clarified making it a serious issue it is a very serious issue as you said we have to take maya seriously we have to take krishna seriously maya is a serious thing and krishna is also krishna consciousness is a very serious thing we have to take it seriously one last since we come from a very competitive background and we got material success till now we expect results in krishna consciousness also very quickly this leads to frustration many times uh, many many times how can we rectify this true in the material world you work for 5 years and then you get a certificate that you pass successfully or you do an activity you get the result quickly tangible results are seen but in spiritual life how to not lose faith and uh, determination or uh, enthusiasm by purvairapi mumukshubihi kuru karmaiva tasmatvam purvaihi purvataram kritam look at the previous successes therefore on our altar we keep a series of them all these are our mahajans they achieved success just like anyone in the material world he wants to become someone he puts that fellow's picture and practices in front of him i want to be like him you know i want to be like him i want to look like him i want to do things like him i want to struggle like him they put their mahajans whoever their mahajan is in their field so we put our mahajan in their field and we follow in their footsteps therefore associating with see again we will come to the next topic the very advanced not very advanced but senior in the movement at least simply just so many years they need to associate with the new people and the new people associate with the senior people why because actually both benefit each other in 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 early ages of krishna in early stages of krishna consciousness there is so much enthusiasm and there is less of patience restlessness is there कर डालो पूरा दुनिया को कृष्ण भावना कर डालो बोलता हूं लाखों पुस्तक वितरण कर दो हरिणाम कर दो चेंज द वर्ल्ड आई टेल यू वाई दिस फेलो इज नॉट टेकिंग सुन सोला माला करने का कल से समझा प्रभु जी दिस फेलो इज नॉट चैंडिंग यू नो सो मेनी टाइम्स ए सिक्सटीन राउंड फ्रॉम टुमारो मॉर्निंग ओके नाइट टू ओ क्लॉक आई प्रीच टू हिम फॉर एट आवर्स कंटिन्यूसली प्रभु जी एंड नाउ ही वॉन्ट्स टू अवॉइड मी एंड गो अवे सो there is so much enthusiasm because faith is there but there is no patience but as you become grow old and old and old at least physically in krishna consciousness there is so much patience no problem sometimes else i will do krishna god and somebody is enthusiastic dekhenge char din ka aisa khujlana kitna nahi chalega bachu char din rahega samajh jayega मेरे जैसा हो जाएगा आराम से बैठेगा बस सोला माला हो गया सो जा सो सो दो काइंड ऑफ सीनियर्स शुड एसोसिएट विद एंथुजियाज इन इन्फेक्शियस सो एसोसिएटिंग विद यंग पीपल यू फील एंथुजियाज एंड आफ्टर दैट पर्सन सीज दिस फेलो स्टिल गोइंग ऑन है दैट मीन्स i should also be steadily going on so that restlessness goes away by associating with mature people who balance patience with enthusiasm so both are important faith is there in both but simply patience without enthusiasm you potentially can easily fall prey to maya and become lazy as years pass 
but simply enthusiasm without patience makes you restless and as you have rightly pointed out frustrated and eventually give up the faith are kaam nahi karta kitna saal se kar raha hu main are 3 din kiya par 30 saal se kiya wala bhagat bichara chal raha hai abhi bhi like a tortoise is going full speed but like a hare you ran and then you rested bas ho gaya na 3 saal japa kiya hu 16 mala abhi sunga thoda 3 years i will take rest then start next next lap it doesn't go like that it's a steady process continuing process ongoing process <clears throat> i said last question one more oh bap re so only this three huh okay in a viewed a couple vikalpa situation one may not be in association and he may take some fatal decision what is the best thing to do in the situation uh this basis impressions even if we continue even if i know i'm not able to understand one particular word what is the best thing to do in this situation acha this what is that acha oh yeah leaves impression even if we continue we may take some fatal decision what are the best thing to do in such situation leave this impression yeah yeah actually as we were discussing the only way to overcome anartha is enthusiasm not misdirected enthusiasm and not laziness the two dangers of these laziness is actually more dangerous misdirected enthusiasm it can be brought after some time you know you learn you get a hit and trial and error method come back in the right track but if you don't endeavor at all you will never learn the lesson of course therefore we need guidance so that we don't make a costly lesson too fatal a decision therefore you have to have that discrimination as we were discussing yesterday give me the strength to change the things i can give me the strength to tolerate the things i can't give me the intelligence to discriminate between the two and if you don't have that intelligence approach a person who has and decide what you can change try to change to the best of your ability and what you can't change don't try to unnecessarily change it because you will get frustrated you can't change it you can't say from today onwards i should change the law of gravity no a law of gravity you know everything from tomorrow i will discover something by which you throw something everything goes keep on going up sorry prabhu it is beyond your control so some things you can't change kali yuga you can't change people's consciousness you can change yuga you can't change nahi nahi kal se satyuga bana dunga main i will discover some you know something suddenly satyuga comes i will spray something and in that area satyuga comes it can't happen kali yuga is there you can what you can change is people's consciousness that don't remain in kali yuga situation at least internally they are transcendent the three modes so what you can change you should do and not get caught up and take guidance that's why we need otherwise why what is fatal fatal means because of foolishness we take a decision which we think is not very important but is actually very crucial a principle is misunderstood to be a detail and neglected or a detail is taken as a principle and gets you get stuck so therefore we need uh, if you have to uh, continue you need you need that guidance that's important otherwise we may either become misdirected or we may lose our enthusiasm after some time 
as rightly said mentioned here so this is the last question hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna you said that doubt pounds on us then krishna surya has gone dim so how to know our doubts in advance and how to work on them how to know doubts in advance meaning how to know what are the doubts that may come yes it's amazing jeev goswami in his bhakti sandarbha and his tattva sandarbha so many others in shat sandarbha has given all possible doubts that may arise in a living entity's mind and solved it sometimes you see in prabhupas books so someone may say nahi i don't say but someone may say tomorrow then nee, krishna was born with you so arjuna asked in advance only so someone may say like this someone may say prabhupas writes you know someone may say someone may say means any one of us may ask at particular bewildered situation like that question some question like that just like krishna knows all the possible different desires of a living entity and knowing that he has cre- created 84 lakh species uske bahar ko soch hi nahi sakta aadmi there cannot be any other desires other than 84 lakh and all 84 lakh species is provided you wait whatever you think you get inside similarly the great acharyas no all bewildered living entity what all question they may ask even the most bewildered state sometimes it sees nonsense nobody will ask such a question foolish simple question people will ask <laughs> and therefore the acharyas in their elaborate purports have covered scrutinizingly all possible doubts that you may never get or you had or you are having right now or you may have in future or you may not have you are not so intelligent to have that kind of a doubt but that is also answered in case some intelligent fellow asks you you can answer at least it's amazing all possible you know like so many routes of escaping into maya <coughs> drop stop 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 ultimately only one path devasai atmika buddhir ek eh kurunandana the acharyas are so intelligent all possible deviations and doubts have been answered 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 all the doors are stopped only one door is open bhaktya mam abhijanati so therefore if you want to overcome them in advance read shila prabhupas books in advance <laughs> even before the doubt comes books are the basis develop such a strong basis what is the basis basis mean the foundation just like a building is as strong as the foundation is deep and generally nobody sees the foundation right pop re itna bada building but nobody digs inside kitna andar gaya dekhe nobody knows the test is when big storm comes which building stands and which building falls similarly scrutinizing study of scriptures seems a little painful activity every day reading digging spending so much time money energy to dig inside and make a foundation but if our bhakti in the heart is built on a deep rooted foundation of philosophical basis then when storms come in our life there are different kinds of storms some storms come sensual storm in the case of ajamil he had a sensual storm on a base of gross senses he saw something it agitated him it created a storm in his life sometimes a mental storm will come i don't like it i like it i dislike it i hate it who cares whether you like it or not krishna likes it you better like it krishna hates it you hate that also then sometimes intellectual storms so many philosophies what is the need of a guru why should we surrender 
why become yes man to someone stand on your own feet tumi aho tumcha jeevana cha shilpakar you are the sculptor of your own destiny so many philosophies intellectual bombardment and at that time the building may collapse and the worst of all is storm on the egoistic platform somebody hurts you somebody insults you or you are not recognized you are not appreciated you don't see any encouragement the ego is hurt or worse than that if you don't appreciate not that shock but blaspheming just because you are a devotee so many blasphemies may come the only thing you have to do is stop chanting hari krishna everything will become smooth all this will come but to the extent the philosophy or the books are the basis if they are so deep we are fixed in ultimate goal of life then shita ushna sukha dukheshu tatha mana apamana yo one who remains equipoised under heat or cold on the sensual platform happiness or distress on the mental platform and honor or dishonor on the intellectual egoistic platform in any situation you simply go on steadily with your devotional service to krishna knowing i am not all of these things these are all material designations these may come and go but i should simply go on serving in my constitutional position as a servant of krishna so that is required if you want to maintain that is why shila prabhupad wrote so many books because he knew i am going away i am an old man i uh, but these books will remain these books will be the light ho lighthouse this will be like the guide star pole star that give us direction where to move towards so he spent so much of energy so much of time effort simply to write these books because he said i will go away but this message will go on these are the law books for the next 10000 years he said so we have to take shelter of these books then we can steadily go on and once the faith develops enthusiasm will be there patience will also be there never losing hope thank you very much for your patient listening and retaining your enthusiasm <laughs> till the end thank you very much hare krishna shila prabhu pad ki nitai gaur primanandi hare krishna